Thank you very much for the opportunity to address you here. Uh, as Finland is now celebrating our first centenary year of our independence, we of course look quite much back to the old days 100 years ago. And I think that if we look to the stories of all Arctic nations, Arctic countries around the Arctic Circle area, the similarity that we have is that we are all quite much catch-up nations. Looking back 100 years ago, Finland was one of the poorest nations in Europe, heading actually to a very harsh civil war. And if some academic person would have been asked 100 years ago in Berlin or in Stockholm or in St. Petersburg or even in London or Washington, that what will happen for this new nation called Finland, I think that <clears throat> nobody would have said that it will even survive from the quite hard, nation, hard uh, century of uh, 20th century, nor that Finland would become actually from marginal poor bordering area of Europe into one of the most advanced economies into welfare society to which actually such nations as Germany in many times look upward when talking about education systems or environmental standards, for instance. And this same is about most of actually uh, countries and nations in the Nordic hemisphere. Talking about the situation, especially Norway, Iceland, Canada, we are all catching up nations. I just visited Canada during the first days of this week and talked also quite much about this same theme. Also, if looking to Russia, which of course geographically covers largest area of the Arctic uh, environment as well, the huge development, the infrastructure, urbanization, uh, activity in Arctic areas in Russia. If you have been in Murmansk or Arhangelsk, uh, it's quite a uh, magnific magnificent achievement to build such infrastructures and activities in such harsh conditions. Uh, so in, in, in Arctic circles, we are really catch-up areas in the world economy in many ways. Uh, we've also been, during modern years, actually, in many ways, showing the path forward. Uh, if looking on the largest single challenge that we have during our generation, the climate change and the environmental uh, problems, we could say that without Danish encouragement of very early investment to wind power, we wouldn't have Germany full of wind power plants now. Uh, without Swedish uh, courage to actually get rid of heating oil already in uh, late 1990s, we would be much less advanced all in, in new kind of heating technologies in the uh, cold areas of the world. Uh, without Finland, which never found oil and uh, was forced to develop its bioeconomy and its forest industry probably further and more advanced than in anywhere else in the world, we wouldn't be able to actually have such an ambitious targets for uh, decreasing the CO2 emissions in the Nordic countries. In Finland, for instance, we have clear targets of abandoning usage of hard coal totally and halving the usage of fossil oil by 2030 and increasing the share of renewable energy up to 50% already by 2030. And uh, that is very heavily based on the uh, side stream industry of uh, our forest sector. Without Norway being bold enough to invest very heavily to electrification of transport, we would be 
five to ten years behind in the electrification of world transport, I would, I would assume. It's quite remarkable. I was a month ago in Oslo and there is already 115,000 electric cars in Norway. Uh, about one third of new cars sold this year electric cars. That's a revolution which has, is, is now coming and it, it wouldn't be coming during this decade yet without such uh, early runner nations. So um, I think that looking at this heritage of what we have actually been and what we have been able to do even with such uh, impossible tasks as 15 years ago in Finland, like nobody would have said that wind power might be as profitable as nuclear power, but it is. Uh, this heritage also brings the responsibility to be ambitious enough also in the future. I don't know who we are if we don't ban usage of heavy uh, fossil oil in Arctic maritime transportation during our decade or so. It, it's also not impossible. For instance, we have now this uh, Finnish icebreaker Nordica here neighboring to this building. And uh, Nordica is already quite old ship built in 1994. First, of course, used heavy oil as its uh, fuel. But now already seven years ago, it turned into new kind of fuel, reducing its uh, sulfur oxide emissions by 90% and nitrogen emissions by about 70%. Things are possible if you just do them. I don't know who we are in comparison to our predecessors if we don't put an end to black carbon emissions in Arctic environment. Uh, I think it's very important that we have now gained more momentum towards working for changing the situation where we have thousands of hotspots which bring black carbon emissions to, which affect <laughs> to the nature very hazardously. Uh, and I don't know, are we large, uh, are we civilized enough if we don't find ways to also connect people even if there is national borders and security borders between us. And here I mean also investing in new sea cables, connections, uh, data, data cables through the North East Passage especially, but all over the region. And obviously to be able to say that also our generation is a generation which can stand and be proud in comparison to our predecessors, we need to find a way to protect the unique Arctic sea nature also outside the traditional economic sea regions that we have. So this is the background for Finnish priorities of our presidency of the Arctic Circle and the Arctic Economic uh, Cooperation Organization, environment, connectivity, meteorology, education. And uh, Nowadays, I would say that as we have uh, today been visiting the icebreaker just nearby here, uh, Finns break the ice anywhere in the world and at least when it comes to ships. And uh, Arctia's newest icebreaker, first LNG icebreaker Polaris, is actually ranked third in the list of top ten ships of last year. And uh, I really much hope that one way to actually make use of the fact that we have a new sea in our hands, which didn't exist 40 years ago, and it's a fact that now we have new sea, which can also bring connections when it comes to vessels and uh, people and uh, cargo flows, will be uh, used also in the way that we manage to invest enough to smart way of operating the icebreaker services to avoid also that kind of accidents which will happen if we don't take into consideration the specificities of this quite harsh environment here. This year has also marked a remarkable scientific 
expedition of Arctic waters called Arctic 100 expedition to, le to celebrate the centenary of Finland's independence and Finland's first year as chair of Arctic Council, Finnish and international researchers did spend three weeks on board observing what the Northwest Passage looks like during this summer. And this um, MSV Nordica, the ship being here today, made actually the record for the earliest crossing of that Arctic route between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, also the record fast trip between Vancouver and Grönland, being at sea for 24 days and traveling more than 6,000 miles in that harsh environment. Finland is obviously grateful to the work done by especially United States as the previous chairman in the Arctic Council and uh, specifically in its subsidiary bodies, including the expert group on black carbon and methane emissions, which was established two years ago. The Fairbanks Declaration, accepted in May, recognizes the work done so far on black carbon and methane and notes the importance of continued work to this expert group. It is also very significant that the work is extending to many other instances and has a high-level political support from all Arctic countries. All states are committed to implementing the aspirational collective goal and most of the observer states also participate in this work. I think that also the European Union has an important role in supporting the northern regions to become a competitive and attractive environment for new businesses and to become a better place to live for us all. To focus the common challenges and goals of the EU here to support jobs and growth and sustainable development, it is important to try to achieve the best possible mix of big but also smaller projects, grants and other financial supports in this region. That should be also based on identification of feasible projects in, in the Arctic, benefiting the whole Europe and its countries, regions and people. There is also quite interesting new kind of sectors which might be in the core of solving challenges, how to navigate the future of, of the Arctic uh, environment and Arctic um, region. The space sector has become actually one of the fastest growing Arctic industries in Finland. Uh, and Finland launched, launched its first satellite in April and prepares its first national space law to encourage commercial activities in that sector. The Finnish space industry has delivered products and services to over 40 satellite programs already and almost 80 Finnish-based companies are involved in space, but the amount of companies having products and services dependent on space technology and applications is much greater even. One of the most promising companies is the Finnish IceEye, which provides quick response imaginary from space with microsatellites equipped with, with uh, imaging, imagining radar technology. The IceEye instrument can see through clouds, obscuring weather, and in the dark, all conditions that limit nowadays the services in situations where waiting for daylight and nice weather is really not an option here in Arctic. This is new reliable data source which really is needed not only by industries such as logistics, insurance, energy, but also by organizations monitoring climate and environment to understand better what is happening here in our common Arctic region. So here just one, some, some examples of our challenges and possibilities and um, I really want to encourage us to be ambitious enough. There is huge problems, we can talk about them, but let's talk more, more about the solutions because we are in the region where people have survived for hundreds of years in impossible conditions. So nothing in it is impossible and we can solve these things just taking ambitious enough policy tools into our usage and then smart engineering and smart policy execution will do the rest. Thank you.